Hey guys, this is Drake. I'm Jesse. And in this video, we want to help you solve one of the big issues that everyone has when they first start a uh, live streaming or a live multicam shoot, which is overlaying graphics or lyrics on top of your stream. Yeah, honestly, it's like probably the biggest uh, point of stress for most directors uh, when they're trying to get everything set up and ready to go. Yep. Uh, the last step is, do I have graphics and media assets ready? And, you know, time and time again, we struggle with keying and how do we prep our graphics. So Yeah, and in this uh, video, we're going to be using the A10 Mini Pro, but this will also work on any A10 switcher that you have. Even the older ones, the software is exactly the mm -hmm. same. Um, and just to be clear, we're just doing this for a Blackmagic demo, um, but the workflow is pretty similar in most things. But most of the people watching this video are gonna be using a Blackmagic device. Yes. Um, and for portable shoots, we just thought this would be the most appropriate uh, item to use. Yeah, okay, so the AT Mini Pro, it only has one upstream key and one downstream key. Luckily, that lets you still fly the key, which we'll get into in a second. Um, so it's pretty powerful, but you can only do one at a time, unlike some of the bigger switchers let you do two, three, four at a time. Uh, you can have multiple flying keys. It kind of gets a little crazy. So this is just a very basic version and the bigger switchers add more. So, so how do I know if my switcher can do those things? Well, in the tech specs from the manufacturer, usually they tell you if you have an upstream or downstream key. Um, all the Blackmagic switchers have at least one. Uh, some switchers have more, some switchers just uh, from other manufacturers don't have any. Mm -hmm. um, so usually you can look that up. If it says 1ME or 2ME or 4ME. Yes, that is a mix effect engine, which then lets you know that you have a key in that engine. So the number would correlate with how many mix effects layers you can have. Yes, so exactly. So almost like Photoshop, if you will. So the Blackmagic Constellation 4ME lets you have four engines, four layers, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. This guy, one. And for our demonstration, we're gonna be using ProPresenter 7 uh, that's gonna be sending our lyrics and our graphics over to our switcher. Um, the same thing will work in ProPresenter 6 or ProPresenter 5. It'll just look slightly different on the software, but the idea works throughout their software lineup. So let's talk about lyrics first. So I need to put lyrics on screen. Yes because uh, that's the first thing that I want. And mm -hmm. just to be clear, this is not captions. Uh, this is burned in or baked in on-screen graphics that are being ran from a local computer. Correct, yep. So we have a lyric pulled up here. It just has a black background with white text in front of it, classic lyric. Um, and the lyrics are centered. So it's just typing lyrics in the middle of your screen. That's basically what it's gonna look like on startup. So we have that uh, lyric sending into another input of our switcher. We happen to be using input two of our switcher to be able to key it over. And right now, camera one, which is our only camera in the switcher, is live. And uh, we're gonna show you how to overlay these lyrics on top of our video signal. Um, so we're gonna go over here to our ATEM software control. This is going to look the same on any ATEM, just with more or less buttons. Um, and you're gonna wanna go over here to the right side of the software where it says palettes, and you're gonna look for the upstream key one. Uh, you're gonna open up your upstream key, and the first tab that's open is your Luma key, which, for those of you who don't know, lets you just key out the black. That's what a Luma key is. No other options, pretty simple. <laughs> um, so you want to set, set your fill and key source. So for example, here we have camera two, which is our lyric input, input two. And so we apply that to the fill and key source. You can see all the options that we have here. Camera two. We're not gonna worry about a mask. A mask is basically just a crop. So if you want mm -hmm. to crop in the image and make it smaller, that's what your mask is. And usually, I leave it on pre-multiplied key. It usually does a pretty good job. You can fine detail it, but it's usually uh, it's spot within, on. It's like right there. Yeah. So usually start with pre-multiply. Mm -hmm. 
if you have a problem, then you can uncheck it and go from there. Yeah. Which I think we will demonstrate. Yes. Um, but real quick, uh, can you explain? Um, can you explain what Luma and Chroma mean? Like, what is that? Yeah. So your Luma key and your Chroma key are two different styles of how you can key out a color, essentially. So what what I mean by that is when you're keying out a color, for example, with the Luma key, you're keying out black, which means you're getting rid of the black background. It's going to find anything in the input, the video input that's black, and it's going to get rid of it. So when we go over here to chroma key, which we'll uh, show you later, but it has the option to set any color uh, that you want. So red, green, blue, you can use those colors for your keyer instead of just black. So if you're just doing lyrics, which we're doing here with a black backdrop, mm -hmm. the Luma key works excellent. Yes. Nice and clean. There's no jagged edges. It works really, really well. Right. Um, so now that we have the fill and key source set up and our pre-multiply key on, we can actually turn on the key and the lyrics will pop up. So over here, we have our on air for our keyer. And if we turn this on here, boom, lyrics are on top of us now which is step one, woohoo! As you can see, there's white text, no black background. It's working, it's but nice and clean. you might be thinking it's in the middle of the screen, <laughs> which it is, which is why we're going to scroll down here to the flying key. Now, this is how you can move the image around. So we're going to check box the flying key on. Oh, it went completely away. Actually, it didn't. It's really small in the corner, yep, right? It is, yeah there. <laughs> um, that's because we had some pre-existing settings. Um, Probably from another shoot. So we're going to put our position X at zero. And then we're going to put our position Y at zero. That's going to recenter it for us. And then we're going to make the size one. So now we're back to the middle. Size one is the default size. It's not shrinking it or making it any larger. Um, so your Y axis is how you can move it up and down. So we're going to go negative seven, which is going to bring it down. Boom. Now it's actually... You can tell you've done that a few times, <laughs> so... <laughs> um, now your lyrics are in a lower third um, position, and you can actually even scale them. A lot of times I like to do 0.60 on the size, makes it a little bit smaller, not as... And if you, have to, if you have displays in the room, you might want them larger. Yeah. And you want to use up that whole 16.9 canvas. Mm -hmm. um, but on, on air, it, it, it can be pretty obnoxious. So yeah, uh, having a little bit of director control there to make sure the live cut looks better is super helpful. Right. So, so that's basically it. We selected our fill and key, set the pre-multiply key, and we flew our mm -hmm. lyrics. Yeah. which means we moved them down. And it's and now it's as simple as turning it on and off. Yep. It's quite simple. Um, the next thing is going to be lower thirds. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting into the colors. And this is where it gets more interesting. Yes. Uh, and we'll ha it won't be so automatic. But step one, black and white values using Luma. Um, it's yep. really fast and easy to get lyrics on screen. By far the easiest thing you can do. Yeah. I mean, that took us like less than a minute. Mm -hmm. And we were rocking. So we're going to go ahead and put a graphic up and we're going to leave it on Luma so that way you can see what we're talking about, um, how it won't work. Uh, right. So we have a lower third graphic with the black background still. And we're going to go ahead and put it on air. And as you can see, it's kind of there. Um, what I mean by that is you can read the white text, but because the image has black in it, it's also keying that out. So it's actually getting rid of part of the image and we can play with it with our pre-multiplied off. I can play with the clip and so you can kind of bring it back. But now you can see, because I've scaled it, now that black is coming mm -hmm. back. So this one kind of works, but it's getting rid of some of the black because it's actually keying it out. So we're gonna show you how to actually uh, fix that. Even though we're, cr we're keying out the black and it looks usable, mm -hmm. the reality is once we change it or go to, go to another slide, right. oftentimes times you'll see pixels or some of the video popping through the back. Exactly. And it looks really, really cheesy. Mm -hmm. We definitely don't want that. Right. So, so now we're going to uh, head over to ProPresenter because that's the first uh, step in making this mm -hmm. better. So Jesse over on ProPresenter. And then what we've done was we've actually pre-selected this, but we 
basically we have to change our backdrop. So before in our Luma, it was black. Right. And it was really easy to key it out. Mm -hmm. So in this scenario, we need to find a color that's completely opposite or as far on the other spectrum as any of the other um, colors in the graphics that we're using. Correct. Typically, you'll see a chroma key blue or green. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we're going to use green. And we simply just enable that. And as you can see, I'm going to cut to that graphic on its own here. And you can see here's the graphic and our bright green uh, backdrop that we have here. What a great green. I, it's fantastic. <laughs> OK, so our next step is now going back to our Atom software here. And in the same upstream key, uh, we need to switch from Luma to Chroma. So we're going to switch to Chroma key. And you need to make sure, again, that the fill source is set to the correct input. So again, ours is input 2, camera 2. And then uh, it's automatically going to find the color that you're using. For example, for us, it's this green, and it automatically found it for us. And again, pretty dang simple after that. We're going to on air our key, same one. And boom, again, centered and smaller, but as you can see, full graphic and no green backdrop because it's pulling that green <laughs> out of the background of the input coming in. Same thing as before, when you want it to be a lower third, you scroll down to your flying key section. As you can see, I just made it bigger by turning it off. Flying key, we can set it to full size if we want to. And again, we can do our negative seven and boom. Now it's a lower third graphic that we have overlaid. It's not pulling any blackout. It's not pulling out right. any color that we don't want pulled out. And we have it keyed over. Typically, we end up leaving all of our things centered from uh, our source, presenter, Resolent, whatever it would be. So that way in the room, it can be full screen center. Uh, but we can do all of the flying and adjusting in our ATEM, which is the more proper way yeah. to do it. Oh my this gosh. is mostly used in live green screening. So if you're doing a live green screen on camera, mm -hmm. th those settings really apply there. For graphics, you typically don't need to adjust them. Because the green is perfect. Yeah, because <laughs> the green is good and you got nice clean edges. Do not mess with gradients um, along your edges. You'll notice our lower third, there's a nice clean line. Yep. It's when people do the gradients that this really doesn't work well. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to do things like gradients, you really need to upgrade and use an alpha layer and really do it properly. But uh, until that, like, just keep it keep it hard edge yep. and uh, you'll be fine. So guys, thanks for watching this video. We hope that this helps you out tremendously trying to fly your lyrics or lower thirds onto your video. Thanks, guys.